Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, accessibility. Hi, my name is Guy Training and this is iPads in a Classroom from Tech Edge and today I'm talking about accessibility, ways that you can make sure that everybody that can use an iPad has the ability to get everything that they can out of it, whether they're learning, communicating, or using it for fun. And the important thing is to remember that students that have, and, and adults and teachers that have disabilities, can adjust the iPad to make sure that they can use it effectively. And there are lots of ways, and Apple keeps uh, adding to this, uh, lots of features. So let's start. The place you go is you go to your settings and you go to general and you can uh, immediately see that one of the first ones that you get is accessibility. So if you click on accessibility you can see that you can have lots of features. Uh, for example, if uh, somebody has eyesight problems, lots of things can make it better. The first thing you can use is zoom. And you can zoom on the iPad in many ways just by using your fingers, but here it allows you to zoom even closer, even things that usually you can zoom to. So you can actually uh, double tap, and you can see this, double tap three fingers to zoom, drag three fingers around to move around the screen, and double tap three fingers to change zoom. So let's try that, and you can see how immediately it opens that window that you can start uh, moving around. So let's go to a place and you can see that you have this piece of screen that now serves as as a way to magnify it's like holding a magnifying glass to it and now you can uh, turn it on and off so just triple push uh, or sorry a double push with three fingers turns it on and another one will turn it off. So this is very easy. This is a way for a student or an adult with uh, vision problems to just get that zoom feature and I'll turn that off. You can also have other things uh, including a control of the zoom level so you can make the same feature uh, considerably uh, larger just by changing it down here. Um, and you can see that this allows you to really maneuver and there are lots of options. For example, a full screen zoom will just make the screen much, much larger and not just a single window. And the trick is then to try and maneuver around, which makes it a little bit more difficult as you, uh, as you go along. But you can see that that's very uh, doable that way as well. So let me just get back to where I need to be and again you move with your three fingers and you can get there and I'm getting to accessibility and you just really the trick is to uh, get used to it and make sure that you're in the right space to make those changes. Uh, it is less comfortable so if you don't have to use it that way definitely don't but if that's something that's going to help uh, this is one way to do that. So this is one accommodation and you can see here that, for example, you can increase contrast, you can uh, reduce motion, you can turn an off and on labels, again, allowing a lot more control over what you can see or not. And if you've got a student that has some uh, eyesight problems, what you want to do is try out the different features and find out the optimal features as uh, you go along. And you can see you can go to grayscale and you can even go to voiceover. Voiceover means that anything around what you touch will immediately repeat. So let me turn off the zoom here. Um, and we're back here and we'll turn instead the voiceover on. And you can do the speaking, you can adjust the speaking rate. And it does change the way your iPad works. So again, this requires a little bit of time to make sure you get used to it. The first thing you see when you start the voiceover is that now you have to move differently around the iPad. To get the speech recognition on, you swipe two fingers down from the top of the screen. And in this case, there's nothing th that the screen can find out. But if we log into an app that has, what you can see is you get controls and it starts reading news, from the top to the bottom. 
and you can jump to the next table, to the next box, just based on that. You can go slower or faster, so you can slow down the voice, or you can speed it up and you can pause it. So what you can do is you can just go to the next box, and we go. 60 degrees. And so you can see that this is a way to get what's going on on the screen. Now, the screen, if the screen is as complex as it is here, you need to make sure that you're following and that you're seeing where it's going. And this is where the highlighting option is really important. And if you press on that uh, arrow on the side, it brings up that control so you can turn it off and on wherever you need. And the one thing I want to show you when we talk about the speed selection is really important. You have different voices that you can choose and you can choose different languages. So if you do need it to be in other languages, you can choose that as well, which is fantastic. And the last thing is uh, being able to manipulate the speaking rate to make sure that this is the appropriate speed that is appropriate for the student or the adult that's using it, not too fast because then you can't understand what's going on and not too slow because that sounds distorted and uh, also becomes hard to understand. The next feature that we have to help is assistive touch. And what assistive touch does is it allows you to actually control the kind of touch that works for uh, students or for, again, for adults that use this. And the trick is that assistive touch helps to adjust if someone has limited movement or they need to use something like a stylus or something else to help do this work, especially if they have poor muscular control or they can touch only uh, very large. And the way you do that is you activate this button that can help you activate and jump around to any point so it's always available right there on the screen and you're able to ju uh, jump there. And you can actually uh, create new gestures that are custom made for a specific student. So you can use something that a specific student can do, especially if they've got limited movement, uh, they've got, uh, they're shaking or there's uh, something else that's going on that you have to adjust to. You can create the movement that they can make and then make it the movement that swipes or the movement that opens a, an app. So this is an easy way to adjust to physical disabilities, especially the ones that restrict movement. Uh, the last accessibility issue that I want to talk about is the um, if you've got uh, problems hearing. And here, here we have a connection to hearing devices, and these are connected through Bluetooth. So if you have a student or an adult that are using a Bluetooth hearing aid, you can connect the iPad directly to it, and that that way control what they can hear and how they can hear directly to their device without having to hear and get uh, mixed messages from uh, the environment. So uh, these are some of the best ways to adjust uh, to a hearing problem. And of course, we have subtitles and captioning that can be turned on for all of media that has that option as a unified a thing and you can use that here in accessibility you go to closed captions and you turn that on and then you will get a captioning everywhere and you can even look at the style of captioning you can even have a larger text if you've got somebody who can't hear and will have a challenge seeing very small print you can have classic prints but I actually think that the large text ones are probably the best ones they are large enough to read they're on a, a nice background and they're somewhat transparent so you're getting the picture from uh, behind them and this is another way to adjust to students with hearing problems. So today we talked about some accessibility issues and we talked about what happens if students can't see very well and how you adjust your iPad, what happens if students can't hear very well and what happens if students have physical disabilities that restrict the way they can touch and interact physically with the iPads. And this is crucially important to make sure that all of our students have access to devices and know how to use them. I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom. Thank <laughs> you.